If you open up your programs and uh, you looked at our next uh, inductee, you're going to realize not only the passion that this man had for hockey, but just in the end, frankly, sports in St. Louis and just what he's meant to the St. Louis community and area when it comes to sports. And the best part about that, and you, and you see these are the subtle things, instead of the bio coming in paragraph form, it looks like the back of kind of a hockey card. It's got the years and the jobs and, you know, the stats and all that stuff in there. So you know that, you know that Frank Ferraro is definitely a sports fan from top, to, from top to bottom. Unfortunately, though, he must have frightened a lot of people because getting the goods on him for this speech was not an easy one. But don't worry, Frank, I found one. This one actually has very little to do with hockey, but it tells you about just kind of how um, widespread uh, Frank's passions were. Apparently, uh, Frank, according to one of your, your really good friends, he would take bus trips or airline trips to you, and this, uh, apparently he'd sit across from Frank. Frank would have earphones on and be listening to music. Turns out he'd be listening to opera. He'd be leading the orchestra while conducting it. He'd also be singing at the same time, apparently forgetting that how loud your voice comes when your ears are muffled. And he would get uh, completely carried away. So, Frank, uh, this has been a long time coming. Congratulations on being inducted into the St. Louis Amateur Hockey Hall of Fame. And come on up here and get carried away for us. You saw that to me. After Mr. Steve. Yes, I like opera. Yes, I do. Yeah. I stand here before you tonight in all humility to be given such a prestigious honor and recognition. The 30 years I spent in the amateur hockey arena were years of enjoyment, maturity, fruition, and gratification. But I owe much to many, and I want to say thank you to many, but I'll start with my family. My sons, I thank for putting up with me as a hockey parent and a coach. Now, those of you who are hockey parents, you know what a pain you were. I was a, um, one of my coaching uh, teams was a, a, a peewee team for Webster, and we had an outstanding team. We came in second that year to Tom McCoy's Kirkwood team. I hated those people. <laughs> At any rate, we had uh, that Christmas, uh, one of the parents had a, um, a cocktail party for the, for the coaches and the parents. And I was talking to one of the parents and he said, whose son was on the first line, he said, uh, isn't this the ideal team to coach? And I jokingly said, no, the ideal team to coach is a group of orphans. <laughs> it took a while, didn't it? <laughs> well, he didn't like it any more than you did. <laughs> So I made another enemy that time there. So I thank my sons. I thank my daughter, Julia, who used to accompany me on Sunday mornings to Delwood and, and uh, 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 North County for our junior, junior games. She used to accompany me every Sunday as long as I bought her a Happy Meal on the way. <laughs> my daughter, Cynthia. Today, she reminds me that she could have been on the Olympic championship team of the women's in recent years if I had let her play when she asked me to play, if she could play hockey when she was 12 years old. I said no. All right, nobody's perfect. All right, all right. So, but there weren't very many girls playing then, and I thought, I thought, I didn't think it was a very good idea, but she's an excellent athlete, and she could have been on that Olympic team. So I thank her for not throwing it up to me all the time. I thank my wife, Sissy for just putting up with me, because I was gone a lot, or the trips, with everything, and she, she did put up with a lot. I must also thank, with great sincerity, Mr. Emil Francis, who gave me the assignment of starting up the junior, St. Louis Junior Blues in 1978. That's one of the highlights of my life, was, was, uh, was uh, starting up that team and running it for many years, and I, have, I, I owe him a lot. I also owe a lot to a very, very close and dear friend of mine, Dave Cooper who was with me through all, most of those years, stood at my side, gave me advice, kept me under temper, and was always a, a good uh, factor for, for, uh, for good thought. And he, one, I hope that one day he will be up here accepting a speech uh, of, uh, as, a, as a member of the Hall of Fame. Through all the years in amateur hockey, I had one precept, that everything was for the players. We were not there for the coaches, for the trainers, for the administrators, for the directors, for the parents. No, not even for the referees. No. 
We were there for the players. Inscribed in the great seal of the state of the Missouri is the state motto, Salus Populi, what is it? Salus Populi Suprema Est Lexo, I screwed it up. Salus Populi Suprema Lex Esto, let, let the welfare of the people be the, be the uh, uh, reigning law. Now, I would paraphrase that by saying, let the, let the uh, uh, welfare of the players be the reigning or supreme law, because that is the, the ideal that I tried to work with all the time. As many of you know, a principal can get you into trouble as a principal of that type, and I certainly had my detractors. One detractor I, I remember very, very uh, well. Uh, we were, Dave and I walked into the, uh, the uh, uh, Brentwood rink one day uh, for a game with the, with the junior game with the Blazers. And there was a, a, a large crowd there, a lot of people talking, there's a din, but above this din, a voice broke out. There are two names I always hear taken in vain, God and Frank Ferrara. <laughs> now I can't tell you how thrilled I was that the, this person mentioned me in the same breath as a good Lord and elevated me, uh, elevated me to such a lofty height. Now I won't tell you this, this coach's name, except that his players used to call him Rolo. Nobody remembers that, good, good, okay. I understand that we're running a little, a little short shifts here, so I have one, uh, one anecdote that I want to tell you and then I will get off. There, is a, um, there was a, a, a psychological convention some years ago, and when the psychologists during the break were sitting around, they started discussing the uh, contributions of, of ethnic groups to the, to the betterment of mankind. And what they came up with was, was that it's a well-ordered world if the Germans are the mechanics the French are the chefs, the English are the police, the Italians are the lovers, and the Swiss are the administrators. However, it's a helter-skelter world if the Germans are the police, the French are the mechanics, the English are the chefs, the Swiss are the lovers, and administration is left in the hands of the Italians. <laughs> I will close by saying that even though I was one of those Italian uh, uh, administrators, I hope that I was of some help to many people and an asset to amateur hockey in St. Louis. I want to thank Scott Rupp and, the, and, the, and his board and the organization for their thoughtfulness and their, and their foresight in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in fostering this, uh, this organization. And finally, I'm grateful to all of you for being here tonight to help me and my colleagues uh, and then celebrate what is to us a very, very momentous occasion. Thank you and keep smiling. <laughs> Not that sensitive a mic. <laughs> Broadcasters learn the reach of the microphones. Coaches haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Coaches don't care. That's another good point. <laughs> Never mind then. Once a coach, always a coach, huh? Yep. yep. Frank, thank you very much and congratulations. <laughs> Please understand as well as we, we go through the inductees tonight, Take the time to look through the bios that are in there. Uh, the fact that I'm not going point by point through them, and I hope I, I'm not by any means cheapening, cheapening anybody's accomplishments. I just wanted to kind of even bring a little more, uh, little more of the actual person to you than what you see in black and white. But uh, much like Frank, I do want to add, and, and I think it's worth noting that while we're celebrating what he did for amateur hockey, I do think uh, that his work with the St. Louis Sports Commission also deserves a terrific round of applause for everything that they've done to bring outside events to the city of St. Louis.